you are a well. He saved you. He's living inside of you. You have living water bursting up inside of you. That's why people are always talking to you. That's why people are always asking you for prayer. That's why all the family troubles tro 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 and something like that, they come to you for it, for you to pray, for you to do something about it. Because you got living water inside of you. You are a well. And the people out there are looking to draw from you. That living water. That's what he put in you. We are all wells. I have a, I have a story or a joke. It's kind of in between, right? I'm going to try it out. Now, depending on how this go, this might determine how the, how the message is going to go. I don't know. It's going to depend on your reaction, though, if it, if it work or not. All right, you ready? Okay, so here we go. All right, so uh, my wife, she's a school teacher, right? And being that she's a school teacher, I usually have, like, the kids, and I'm taking them to school, bringing them back, all that stuff, right? Well, I have a, a daughter, I have a granddaughter, and I have a grandson, all right? Now, I go pick up the granddaughter one day from school, right? And she gets in the car, and uh, she calls me Paul G, all right? Paul G, because my first name is James, and I'm a Paul Paul. I don't look like a Paul Paul, but Paul J seemed like it would fit, so we've been just going with Paul J. All right, so granddaughter, she gets in the car, and she says, Paul J. I'm like, what? She said, Paul J, you are so cool. Really? Yeah, Paul J, you are so cool. Okay, well, why am I cool? Paul J, you're so cool because you were born in the 1900s. <laughs> you, yeah. I, but it makes me cool. Yeah, you could. I wish I was born in the 1900s. And I was like, man, wait a minute. So, but I had to think about it like, y'all, but look. So the children, I mean, everybody 24 and under, you know what I'm saying? They, they got a, like a 2000 birthday, right? But everybody above 25 and over, we in the 1900s, y'all. <laughs> and I'm like, man, whoa. Like, we, so I guess that means I'm old, I guess. I was like, wow, so, all right, we, we, I was born in the 1900s, y'all. <laughs> Go figure. All right, all right. 1985 to be exact, all right? If you was wondering, I'll guess him. All right, so, that went, that went all right? Okay, praise God. All right, good deal. All right. Let's get it, y'all. Matthew 5, uh, 3 through 11. And the scripture says, y'all, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you false, falsely <clears throat> for my sake. Father God, we thank you for your word, Lord God. We pray that you would bless it, Lord God. I ask that you would... Um, decrease my flesh, Father God, and that you would increase your spirit in me, Father God. Let this word, Lord God, let this word fall on good ground, Father God. I command that this word would be potent, Father God. Let it be a sweet aroma, Lord God, and let it edify the body of Christ, Father God. Let us leave better than the way we came in. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, saints of God. So the last time I came up here, we were talking about the Beatitudes, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And the title of the message was To Be or Not To Be. And there were several Beatitudes that we had ran through. And I'm going to just do a quick re recap, but I don't want to take too long with that. But we had talked about the to be or not to be. Well, how did we get that title, right? We had just dropped upon me, and I thought about the to be or not to be. Well, where did that come from? Well, that was a, that was a play back in a Shakespearean time. It was a the play by, um, uh, it was a, the Shakespearean play called Hamlet, right? And now Prince Hamlet, this dude here is, he's thinking about his life. 
And they said that to be or not to be, they called it a soliloquy, which means a soliloquy is when there's a stage play going on and the actors are acting. And one of the characters, whenever he's doing his lines, if within his lines, if it's some type of thought in his mind, well, we're not gonna know what he's thinking unless he says it. So when he performs this particular act, it's like he's thinking and he's thinking it out loud. So as the onlookers, we're hearing his thoughts. And he gives this to be or not to be. And he's specifically, he's wondering whether it might be preferable, y'all, to commit suicide, to end one's suffering, and to leave behind the pain and agony associated with living. It was to be or not to be, to live or to die. And we talked about that. And we talked about the Beatitudes, and we looked at, well, where does the Beatitudes come from? What is that word Beatitude? In Latin, it is Bente sunt, which means blessed are, blessed are. We also talked about and discussed, well, where is this, these Beatitudes found? Where is it in Matthew, Matthew chapter 5? And this is called the Sermon on the Mount. There's also an, another account called the Sermon on the Plain, which is in Luke. We talked about how this is Jesus talking. And he says, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Boom, the Beatitudes, all right? We said that the Beatitude, y'all, is the attitude of the kingdom. It's a behavior, it's a mindset, it's the way that we should think and go about our daily lives. When we looked at the word blessed, all right, in the Greek it is makarios, makarios. And we learned that blessed could be happy or happier, fortunate, well off, but there was another word that we dubbed and we said, supremely blessed. Y'all remember that? Say it with me, supremely blessed. Now when you just said that just now, you just told 17 million cells in your body that you are supremely blessed. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So your whole body is agreeing with that. That's why we gotta speak these things and we gotta watch how we talk, we gotta watch how we say, and when we say something negative, 17 million cells in your body just received that negative thought or that negative statement. So say it again. I am supremely blessed. You felt that? Ah, that's what I'm talking about, man. We bless, y'all. Now, the world system is seeking after happiness, seeking after joy, but never attains it in worldly things. We also looked at how the Beatitudes is also found, actually also there's some Beatitudes in the Old Testament, the blessings and the cursings. We had talked about that. We learned that there are nine Beatitudes in Matthew. And we covered uh, at the beginning out of verse three was the poor in spirit. And what we learned was that the poor in spirit is not talking about being broke. It's not talking about that. Rather what it is meaning that no matter what condition I'm in, low condition, high condition, up or down, the inward me is still good. It's still holding on to Christ. It's not being wavered. And we said that blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We also looked at the next scripture. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. When I looked at the word mourn, for me, all I to think about a funeral. Mourning, people mourning, people crying at a funeral. But that's not what this mourn was actually talking about. When we looked at the Greek word for mourn is pentheo, which means to lament one, to grieve, to bewail, to feel guilt. And we learned that to mourn, really, what the scripture is talking about, to mourn upon your own sin. And it's not the mourning for the consequences of sin, but it is the overall sin itself and how it has stained the soul. And then we said, once we have this mourning for our sin, once we have this, this, this grieving about how this sin has stained us, we saw that after we do that, it says, for they shall be comforted. The Holy Spirit comes through, and he comforts us, y'all. He comforts us. John 14, 26 says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said 
unto you. Next, we talked about in the Beatitudes, we talked about blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We talked about the meek, y'all. It doesn't mean somebody that's quiet. It's not about being quiet. It's not about being timid. That's not the meekness that Jesus was talking about. Meek in the Greek was a word called prios. It means mildness of disposition, a gentleness of spirit. Dictionary.com give a definition of the fact or condition of being submissive. Now, I never thought that meek and submissiveness would go hand in hand, but that was the meekness that Jesus was talking about. Meekness toward God is that disposition of spirit in which we accept his dealings with us as good. What does that mean? Break that down. That means whatever the decision the Lord makes, however the Lord wants to deal with us, we accept it. We say, if it's in, here, if it's in the Lord's hands, if the Lord's will, the Lord is allowing this, then I accept it. I'm going to roll with it. And look, and therefore, without disputing or resisting. Now, that's a challenge right there. Because we could be like, ooh, okay, Lord, but then we might could dispute it. Like, Lord, but not that, Lord. Or we might, want, we might resist it. Lord, I, I, I just, I'm just i not feeling that, Lord. Ah. But that's not, being, that's not us being meek. I never would have thought meek would have meant me being submissive and not resisting God. That is actually being meek. It's not being quiet. It's not being timid. It's not being shy. That is not meekness. Moses, y'all, was meek. Numbers 12, 3 says, now the man Moses was very meek. That means he was very submissive. Look all what Moses had to do. He had to be very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth, Moses submitted to God. And the number one, Jesus himself, he was meek. He says in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Now when we say Jesus is meek, even me saying it right now, I'm thinking about, oh, he was just, he was, he was, he was calm. He was chill. No, he was submissive. And we know that he was submissive because he was submissive all the way even up to the cross. Not resisting. Your will, not my will. Not disputing. He did that. Jesus was meek. And it says that, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Also, that inherit in the Greek was a, is a long Greek word, kleronimio. I'm going to say it one time, and that's it. We're moving on. <laughs> and that inherit, y'all, that inherit means to receive a lot. You receive that? To receive a lot. I want to receive a lot. A lot of what? A lot of blessings. So we got we to put definitions over. We got we to gotta fill it in the sentence because you don't want a lot of trouble, <laughs> Right? All right, we want, we want a lot of blessings. Received by lot to be an heir, to receive the portion assigned to one. How many people want the portion assigned to them, right? I want the portion that's assigned to me. So now, as we continue tonight, y'all, we're going to look at verse number six, all right? And that is, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. I wanted to do two scriptures, but we're just going to take care of just one, and we're just going to go down this street, and we're going to look at every house on this street and pull out what we can get out of them houses. Amen? All right. So looking at blessed are they which do hunger and thirst, we want to first look at that word hunger. Hunger. Anybody hungry tonight? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry. But it's good, though. But to hunger, y'all, in the Greek is a word called penayo. Say that with me. Penayo. Penayo. And that means to suffer want, to be needy, to crave ardently, to seek with eager desire, to famish, to famish. Now, we know what it feels like to hunger in our physical body. You know what it's like when you work and you get that hunger pain? You know what it's like to hunger, all right? And it made me think about 
when, when, when Jesus was talking to Peter, and, he, it, and, and Peter must have been tripped out, like, Lord, why you keep repeating yourself? Lord, I answered your question already, but Jesus kept saying, Peter, you love me? Yeah, Jesus, feed my sheep. He said it again. Peter, what's, what's, what's up, Jesus? You love me? Feed my sheep. Three times. Peter, hey, you love me? Feed my sheep. So he's, he's telling this to Peter three times, and I'm like, why is he, why, why is he impressing upon feed my sheep? And when Jesus is saying this, y'all, he's not talking about literally going, look, let, let, let the sheep out and let the sheep eat the grass. Be sure you let the sheep eat the, let the, sheep eat the grass. No, that's not what Jesus, it, it was, a, it was a, another type of hunger. Not a physical hunger, but a spiritual hunger. Now, you know whenever you're hungry, you could be kind of aggravated. You could be kind of sharp patient. You know, you could just be just a little, just not, you're just not yourself. That makes me wonder, you know, people in the world right now, they're awfully impatient. They're awfully, re- very, very frazzled. Very, very agitated. Any little thing agitate them. Very sensitive about things and, and, and all this, all that, right? But Revelation, guess what? They're hungry, but not for food. They're not hungry for food. They don't know what they're hungry for, but they're hungry for something. Tonight we're going to talk about what they're really hungry for. And it's the thing that you, or you already got it. But they don't have it. They're starving out there. They're starving. And y'all, the population, they're hungry, yeah, but they think they're full. They don't even, they don't even know. Have you ever eaten a, eaten a, eaten a donut and, and you thought you was going to be full with that? And that, did, that didn't even work. No. It, 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 you, or you eat a salad and you'd be like, man, I just ate a salad, but that thing is gone. <laughs> it just is gone. <laughs> You know, like you never ate it. You know what I'm saying? It never got full. It never, it never really, it didn't stick to your bones how they say that, right? Well, the population out there, y'all, they're, they're full. It's just not on Jesus. They're full on a lot, of, a lot of different things. And what happens to the body when we eat a whole bunch of junk? We're going to get sick. They sick out there, man. They sick out there. And there's so many things people can be full on. And even us ourselves, even as believers, we can still be full on some things. There's some negative things we can be full on. And there's also actually some positive things that we can be full on too. There might just be a little too much though, even though it's a positive thing. What's some things we can be full on? Just quickly, we can be full on the news. And look, this message right here, if it ain't for you, it's for me. All right? But if it hits you, it hits you. But this entire message is for me. But we could be full on news. CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, the radio news, the podcast news, the internet news, TikTok news, Facebook news, Instagram news. It's all a whole bunch of news. But we inundated with that. And during the pandemic, man, when 5.30 came, shh, ask my wife. 5.30 came during the pandemic, shh, we gotta watch the news. We gotta watch the news. We gotta see what's going on. What's happening? What's the numbers at? What's, what's, what's... Full on news. It's too much. It's too much. And you wonder why people anxiety, why people they commit suicide, they worried about this, they worried about that, they pressure high, all this. You full on the news. Another thing we full on, sports. Chavis, where you at, Chavis? They full on sports. Sports this. Football, basketball, track, field, everything. Hockey. I don't know. <laughs> but he full on it. And now you, got, now you got sports betting, they really full on it, all right? But it's, it, they, know every, every, they know every stat, every three-pointer. <laughs> you, know, you, you know all about his family. What about your family? <laughs> you know everything about his house, what about your house? Like, wait, come on, man. Full. Not saying sports is evil, but it's too much. It's too much. We could be full on shopping. They shop till they drop, till they can't pick up a mop. Like, wait, like, I love to shop, but wait, you gotta slow down. Full of work, work, 
work, work. And we're in a system that, 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 that's causing everybody got to work. Mama, daddy got to work. Papa, mama got to work. The grandchildren got to work. The dog got to work. The cat got to work. Everybody working. We just all worked out. <laughs> and full of work. And then we can be full on careers. Not saying that's a bad thing. We should have a career. We should go after it. But where's the balance? Where is God in it? Because the world out there, they're not seeing God at all. They're not seeing God at all. We could be full on relationships. Boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, uh, um, the, the, the brother, the sister, the uncle, the, the, the nan, the, the papa, the, the, you know what I'm saying? You try to keep these relationships together and hold, hold everything together. And you wasn't made to hold it all together. He's going to hold it together. Let him take care of it. You can't fix everything in the, in the family. You're not capable of doing it, baby. No. Give that to God. He's going to take care of it. You're not strong. He's strong enough. You're not strong enough. Let us, put, that, put that yoke on him. <laughs> take it off of you. Children, we can be full on children. Everything is about the children. The children, the children, the children, the children. The children going to grow up, and they're going to be gone. They got to grow up but we could be too inundated about the children. Not that taking care of the children is a bad thing. No, take care of your children. Nah. Please take care of your children. But it can't be everything is that. Every, it's all about that. No. Lastly, vices. Now, this is the negative things. Now, I'm not going to list all the vices because last time I checked, we all that fell short of the glory of God. We all come from Adam and Eve. So I mean, we know the, about the good and evil. We know when something is good, and we know when something is bad. So what we're going to do right now, we're just going to say ouch at the same time. Ouch. That's all them vices. You can be full on that. And the world is full on that. Are we hungry or are we full? Now, if you are hungry, you are going to do what? Search for food. When you wake up late in your house, that late night snack, the stomach, oh, you, well, you go to the refrigerator, what's in there? All right? I mean, warm something up. You go search for food, right? It made me think about Psalm 3410. Psalm 3410. It says, the young lions do lack. So this is a young lion. This, this is not a strong lion. This is probably a little cub lion. He ain't got bite. He might not have all his teeth yet. He can't even growl yet. He growl like a little Simba back in line. He can't growl. He can't even do the big growl yet. It's a young lion do lack. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. So they hungry. They hungry. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Now that word that stuck out to me was that word seek. Somebody say seek. In the Greek, that word is, no, 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 not the Greek, the Hebrew, darash. Say it with me, darash. That means seek. And there's a several couple of meanings. It says that inquire. But they that inquire the Lord. What's another one? Require. But they that require the Lord. Wait, I could require the Lord of something? You sure can. What makes us feel like we can't require something from God? Ain't he God? He requires something from us. But we are, we, we fall short. We don't. But when we require something of him, he holds it down. He's a hundred every time. He'll never miss. We can require of God. Yes. Search. Resort to. I like that one. But they that resort to the Lord. And so often sound we say, man, man, they, 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 they chose the Lord as the last resort. And we look at that, that might be a bad thing. Not to God. He said, he, yeah, it's supposed to be like, yeah. I put him through all that other stuff so I would be their last resort. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you, you will pick Christ. Look, you will. And he's going to bring you through it. You will choose him. 
you will resort to the Lord, frequent the Lord, consult the Lord, investigate the Lord, demand, whoa, demand the Lord? We could demand the Lord? That sounds kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to demand the Lord or something. That might be, I don't, I don't know. But last time on my Bible said that I could come boldly to the throne of grace. Demand the Lord? Yeah, you can't demand the Lord. Understand that God is in you. God is in you. So you think you're the he, he demanding himself. He just he's talking to himself because he's living in you. He wants you to try him. That's what he wants you to do. Come on, come on, try me. You could demand him. Not off top. You know, you cannot demand him something evil that don't work like that. That is out of the programming. No, you got to be in the programming. All right? In the programming. It got to, it come on. It got to fit him. Nah. Let's, be, let's be reasonable, right? But you can demand the Lord. Ask for, seek with care, seek with application. Now, those who choose God shall not lack anything. Those who choose God shall not lack anything. Now, when we read the scripture in the, in the, K, in the King James, but now we go, or go, go back to the King, King James real quick. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. If you read it fast, it might sound like you're saying, well, I'm not going to want nothing good. No. Put up the, 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 the New King James. It says, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. So what that means, let me break that down. A lack of good will not be in your life. A lack of good will not be in your life. So that means on the other side, that means everything good will be in your life when you choose God. It will. It absolutely will. Now, when it came to that seek, I want to break down the seeking a little bit more. Because breaking, breaking, breaking it down, the seeking, sometimes we may think the seeking is us, we in, we in the Bible and we word. That is a good thing. It is an absolutely good thing. We should seek him in the word. These are the scriptures. These are his, this is, is his, his scriptures. But he, he is the word. He is, 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 is the local. He is the word made flesh. The Bible, that's what we, that's our foundation. That's what we stand on. All right? But so we have to seek him not just here in the, in the word. You have to seek him in here because he's living in you. You have to get to know him in you. How does he speak to you? Because how he speaks to me is going to be different how he speaks to you because he's living in you and he's living in me. But we're all different. But we're all the same because he's in all of us. We got to stand not just on his word, but understand the God that we serve is bigger even than the word. That we read. Come on, you know it, man. The scriptures talked about me with Jesus, man. All the miracles that he did, they couldn't even contain it and put it in the Bible. God bigger than his Bible. Come on, man. The word says, man, the heavens can't contain him. Earth can't contain him. We can't think that the book will contain him. No, man, he is bigger than that. That's just how much of a big God we serve, man. Understand what's living inside of you. What happens if they take all these Bibles away? They take all our phones and you locked up and you can't touch no scripture. You're going to have to rely on the scripture that's been put inside your body. The spirit that's inside of your body to keep you going and understand that he really is living in us. He's living in us. Psalm 107, 9, it says, For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Psalm 42, 1. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. 
that heart. It's talking about a deer. Now just be wondering, man, what was going on with that deer before that deer got to that water brook? Was somebody chasing that deer? I, was it a lion after that deer? Was it a tiger after that deer? Because that deer is, is, is panting right now. It, it's looking for water. It, it's, it could have been running for its life. But it made it to the water brook. And then David is saying, man, so panted my soul after thee, O God. And David has Saul chasing him. And when we in that world, we got the devil chasing us. And look where it ran us to. It ran us to the water brook. It ran us to the church. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. While he is near. Y'all, we in a time right now, it is going to be harder and harder to seek the Lord. So many things are advancing with technology and AI and this thing and that thing. I mean, technology is moving way faster than we ever thought it would in our own lifetime. We're sitting with, with different generations of people all right now, all grew up on four different things. You know what I'm saying? A-track, vinyl, cassette, CD, MP3, uh, a dumb drive, and now we're streaming. All these generate, all in one, in one vicinity, we all didn't experience that, you know what I'm saying? In one level or, or another. Technology is moving really, really fast, and it's keeping us really, really busy, and it's making us be, be, not be able to seek the Lord. It's, it's going to make us, and more things are going to come out, man. So that's why it says, seek him while he can be found. That means you better get saved now rather than later, because later it might just be harder for the things that's going to be out there later on. Continuing on, y'all, we're going to talk about, we talked about hunger, but now we want to talk about thirst. We want to talk about, can we pull up that, that Matthew, uh, no, not, not, not yet, the, uh, just the scripture, just the scripture. Um, Matthew 5, 6. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger. We talked about hunger. Now, our second point, I ain't even give you all the points yet. My fault. But we're in point number two. Thirst after righteousness. I want to talk about thirst. That word thirst in the Greek is dipsado. Say it with me. Dipsado. And it means to painfully feel their want of or eagerly long for by those things that only the soul can be refreshed by. So, y'all, we don't just hunger. We also can be thirsty, right? Now, the human body, y'all, could, you could, you could, uh, on food, no, 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 how I want to say this. You can go without food for only so long. But water and food, you're going to have a problem real soon. All right? So we hungry and we thirsty. The world right now is not only hungry, but they are also thirsty. And they are perishing because of it. Now, y'all ever heard that saying, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink? I thought about something. I said, well, I could bring a horse to water, but I can't make it drink. But what if I wait till it's thirsty? What if I wait till it, it, it's famished? What if I wait till it, 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 it needs some water real, real bad? You bring it, it's going to drink. Ain't that what God did with us? He waited till we was down, till it got lower, till it got lower, till it got lower so that you would drink, so that you would drink of him. When we hunger, y'all, we need the bread of life. And when we're thirsty, we need the living water. We need the living water. I want to bring up, y'all, John 4, 5 through 29. And we're talking about the woman at the well, all right? 
So then coming, he talking about Jesus to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakkar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. All right, verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. So Jesus had been moving around, and Jesus was tired. Yeah. Jesus was tired. He was 100% man and 100% God. So having all strength and all power, but still in an understanding what it's like for his feet to be, get tired. Check him out. He's leaning, he, he leaning on the well. All right? It must be high noon. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Verse 8. For his disciples were going away unto the city to buy some meat. So the disciples, they went, see, they went to get Burger King, um, Wendy's, or probably some Taco Bell, because Jesus' feet was tired, and he was weary, and he was hungry. All right? So Jesus chilled him out of well. And then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So the woman is like, man, why are you even asking me this question? You ain't even supposed to be talking to me. You shouldn't even be talking to me. And Jesus says, Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest, I won't stop right there. <laughs> he chilling. His feet hurt. He been healing all day. The disciples went to go get some Burger King for him. He had a well. A woman coming up to the well, he asked her to give, her, give him something to drink. And she's like, why are you even talking to me? You ain't supposed to be talking to me. Well, give me something to drink. And he said to her, give me to drink. If thou knewest, that's what I want to get at. If thou knewest the gift of God. So this question, is, he's putting this, this out to her, and it was like, boy, I'm reading it, I'm like, boy, he got a way of talking, like, right there. Because she not realizing that she is before the one who made that sun and that sky that's causing her face to be hot right now, which is why she come and get some water, because she's hot anyway. She don't realize that she's standing before the one that caused the mountains to rise up and told the waters to stop right here. She don't realize she's in front of the one that made all of the animals and all of the trees and all of the, the, the vegetation on the entire earth. She don't realize who she's standing in front of. She's standing in front of her creator, and her creator is asking her a creation for something to drink. If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Girl, homegirl, if you knew who you were standing in front of, if you knew who I was, but you don't know right now, but if you knew who I was, you would have asked me to give you some living water. Now look what she said, verse 11. Verse 11 says, The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. So she was being smart. Because I was picturing my mom, she's saying it like this. Uh, ba you ain't got a cup, you ain't got a bucket, and you ain't got a rope. I'm going to give you some water. You know? She being smart. The well is deep, and from whence then has thou that living water? So like she, and then she's like, and that living water you talking about? I mean, where you even got that from? Living water, what, 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 what flavor is that? <laughs> what, what is that? Verse 12, she, she, she said, look, she said, art thou greater than our father Jacob? Mm. She don't know who she in front of. That's why Jesus said, if thou knewest the gift of God that was in front of you, she don't know. Before Jacob was, <coughs> I am. You understand? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Verse 13. 
Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. You drink from this well, you're going to be thirsty again. That means you're going to be, you're going to be empty again when you drink from this well. Verse 14, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. What is Jesus saying? You are a well. That's what he's saying. He saved you. He's living inside of you. You have living water bursting up inside of you. That's why people are always talking to you. That's why people are always asking you for prayer. That's why all the family troubles and something like that, they come to you for it, for you to pray, for you to do something about it. Because you got living water inside of you. You are a well. And the people out there are looking to draw from you that living water. That's what he put in you. We are all wells springing up what water which gives everlasting life. It's the gospel, man. He preached to it right there, man. It looked like it's about some water in a bucket in a cup, and he thirsty and he weary, but he witnessing. But he chilling, but he witnessing. If we really got Jesus, like we say we have Jesus, we should always be on full. We should always be actually full. He saved us, right? He redeemed us, right? He's living inside of us, right? He's given us his living water, which means that we never thirst again. Not for, not for physical water, but spiritually. We never thirst again. We never needed nothing else after we got him. <laughs> we should always be on full. Why are we not on full sometimes, though? Why are we not on full sometimes? We get weary. Life. But this is just a reminder that Jesus is living in you. And you are his well. And you've got to distribute that living water and trust and know that that water is living inside of you. I'm going to fast forward into the story. I want to go to verse 25. He says, in verse 25, the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh which is called Christ, when he has come, he will tell us all things. So quickly, just fast forward, what happened was, they're having this discussion. She talks about the mountain where they worshiped on. Jesus tell her, look, um, that man you're living with, not your husband. And matter of fact, you had a few more before that. that so she like, oh, he know all my business. <laughs> that's, that's the Washington Heights version right there. So the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus, he just shut the case right here. He, tell, he told her, I that speak unto thee am he. The one you've been waiting for, the one you've been praying about, the one you was, had been, been hoping for, the one that you say, you know that Messiah cometh is going to be called the Christ. He's going to tell us all things. Well, the man that's standing in front of you just told you all about yourself. You stand in front of the creator himself. And after she has this encounter, what does she do? She told everybody. She told the whole city. She told everybody, let me tell y'all about a man that told me all about myself. And let me tell you, that's my story. Let me tell you about a man that told me all about myself when I came to Philadelphia. Pastor Omar was preaching one Sunday. I came one Sunday morning. It wasn't him that was preaching. It was the Lord himself through Pastor Omar and was hitting things like, I don't know who that man is, but he's all in my grill. <laughs> he's the all, all my business. Never met him before. And that did something. That did something. Hallelujah. Like it did this woman. So we proclaim it now. We proclaim it. Wrapping up, y'all, we almost done. Righteousness. If you could pull up that Matthew again. If you could pull up Matthew. We're going to talk about righteousness. Righteousness. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That righteousness, y'all, 
is the state of him who is as he ought to be. That's righteousness. What we ought to be. How many of us are what we ought to be? Show not me. Uh-uh. I ain't there yet. But we striving, but I ain't there yet. We, not, we want to get to where we ought to be. Another definition was the condition acceptable of God. Integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. Correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. Because our thoughts can mess us up. Oh, our feelings can get in the way. And our actions so get us in trouble. But that's how we ought to be. How we ought to be. Matthew 6, 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and seek how you ought to be. And all them things, all these good things is going to be added unto you. Jesus even said in Matthew 5, 20, For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Break it down. What he's saying is, look, these scribes and Pharisees, they actually are down here because Jesus had not already checked them already because outside y'all look fly, but on the inside is dead man's bones. And y'all abusing people, y'all cheating people, y'all twisted my word. You as believers, y'all righteousness better exceed them scribes and Pharisees. That's why he gave us a new law. They told y'all this, but I tell y'all this. You got to love your neighbor. You can't hate nobody. Not just, not just don't murder. No, don't hate nobody. For they shall be filled. We coming on home. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. When we have a hunger and a thirst to become who we ought to be, God will fill us with who we ought to be. That's what it is. Now, the alternate reality of this scripture is our default setting when we're born. Well, how does that go? How does that sound? It sounds like this. Cursed are they which do not hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be empty. That's the world out there. That's what, we, that's what God brought us out from. We was cursed. There was a curse that was on us. And we wasn't hungering after righteousness. We were hungering after unrighteousness, who we should not be. That's what our default setting was. That's what we was doing. And it left us empty. It left us empty, empty. So the world outside of Christ, outside of truth, can become a place of endless seeking of satisfaction only to never be satisfied. There's no satisfaction out there. None at all. And they dine out there, they hungry, and they thirsty out there. I come here tonight to remind you, you are a well springing with living water everlasting life is within you. You have the knowledge of the gospel. I'm not telling you you got to go door to door and hit everybody up. No. Just wait for the open window. Wait for the opportunity, because guess what? When they notice that you are well, when they notice, man, she, she don't really like, she don't really curse. She don't really do this. She don't really do that. They go, they go analyze the situation, and guess what? A hard day gonna come for, for, for them. And they gonna ask you, why are you so joyful? Why are you so this? Why are you always peace? Why, why is it like that? And then that's when you get to tell them what's in you and how they can get that too. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 Most high God, we thank you, Lord God, for your beatitudes, Lord God. Thank you for taking us down this street, Lord God, and showing us, Lord God, about your righteousness, Lord God, about uh, hungering and thirsting after you, Lord God, is what we should be doing, Lord God. Help us in any area where we've fallen short at in our lives, Lord God, even me personally in my life, Lord God. 
Help us all, Lord God, to continue to strive for you, Lord God, and let us be that well, Father God. Continue to let that living water be inside of us so that we could, so that others could draw from us. We're just really just drawing from you. If there's anybody tonight that does not have that well, you haven't made that decision yet to choose him, and you saw in the word where it was said, look, when you choose God, good things you will not lack. You will have all good things in your life. So just repeat after me. Say, Lord God, I believe you. And I take you at your word. That if I would choose you, my life will be blessed. My life will be well, and you will make me a well, springing up with living water. But I need you to wash me with the blood of Yahshua Jesus. Purge me, get the sin off of me. Renew my mind and make me a new creature. When you see me, God, may you see your son, his blood upon me. May his righteousness be upon me. Save my soul. Redeem me. Cleanse me. Help me in this journey that you have given me to do. Let the salvation experience Radiate not just upon me, but upon my entire household. And let them feel that change. And let them ask me, what must I do to be saved? Save my soul, God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Give God glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Saints of God, thank y'all so much for coming out tonight. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you and give you shalom. May your week be supremely blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.